it starts now, Jen. Uh, so okay. <laughs> Sorry about all the background noise, all of you. <laughs> We're not exactly techies here, but we do our best. So as I was saying, welcome to all of you who are joining us from around the world. I believe we have over 100 people registered from dozens of nations, um, the Philippines, South Africa, Kenya, Singapore, Pakistan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Indonesia, Costa Rica, and many, many more. So we're excited to have you with us this morning. and. Um, we look forward to learning a lot today. I'm Dawn Jewell. I work with Media Associates International, MAI. We help train Christian writers and publishing staff all over the world. Um, I'm a communications manager here, also a freelance writer and a nonfiction author. So this morning, we are delighted to have with us uh, Christine Kinberg. Um, she is a fiction author and um, the author of the young adult novel, The Means That Make Us Strangers. Christine grew up in Peru, Chile, Panama, Kentucky, and North Carolina. She studied English literature at Wheaton College and she has a master's of fine arts and creative writing. She lives in the Chicago area as well, where she works as a Spanish language editor at Tyndale House Publishers. So, and Christine is actually also uh, one of our newest members on the MAI International Board, and we are thrilled to have her. So, um, this morning, I am going to uh, hand the reins over to Christine in a minute, and she is going to share with you the lesson she's learned on how to effectively promote your self-published book for the first 30 minutes. And then I will ask her some interview questions for 15 minutes, and then we will move into a time of another 15 minutes where you in the audience can ask questions of her through the chat box. Um, so today's topic, how to effectively promote your self-published book, um, seems like there's a lot of interest and demand in that, uh, especially now, self-published books have uh, grown astronomically uh, in the US, the UK, and uh, around the world. Um, they account for about 30% of all ebook sales, at least in the largest English language markets today. So we know as authors that um, getting the word out about our book can feel really daunting. Uh, especially as a self-published author when the load of responsibility lies on your shoulders. So today, Christine's going to be sharing with us a lot of helpful tips and tools that she has learned uh, and can pass on to you to enable you to create an effective strategy using the time and resources that you have and feel can best help you reach your own target readers. All right, so... Um, before we move on, I just want to give a little endorsement to Christine and her book, The Means That Means Make Us Strangers. Um, in the August 3rd issue of Publishers Weekly Magazine, which is a very widely read magazine, at least in the US, um, a reviewer called her book a powerful debut young adult novel that, quote, illuminates injustice without being preachy or didactic. So. I was impressed and I did very much enjoy her book. So I hope you will too. All right, I'm gonna hand the reins over to you, Christine. Thanks so much for all you have to share with us and being with us this morning. Thanks, Don. Thanks for moderating today. And uh, thanks for that introduction too. That was very kind. And thanks to all of you who are joining us. I think yesterday Ramon said there were people from about 21 different countries. That's super exciting for me. I, uh, I hope that this webinar will be adaptable enough to fit different contexts, that's my goal. So I hope that you'll be able to apply it to your specific context, wherever you're coming from. So let's get started. Let's see if I can share my screen here. And uh, let's see. Is this... Let's see if this works. Uh, can you see it now? Full screen? Looks good. Okay, great. Uh, so our topic today is how to effectively promote your self-published book. I, as a little bit of my background, I am, uh, let's see, how do I, there we go. I am an author, as Don said, this is my novel, The Means That Make Us Strangers. 
I am a, I, uh, I love writing. I've been writing ever since I can, uh, well, ever since I learned how to write. I've always been making up stories ever since I can remember. And I love um, the, the business of putting together and the creativity of putting together a story and figuring out the, who the characters are and what sort of context they're coming from, all that about writing. And that's what I studied as, as an undergraduate in university. That's what I studied for my master's program. I just love writing. Marketing, however, is, has been new to me. When I got ready to publish this novel, I realized I had a lot to learn. It, I knew marketing was something you were supposed to do, but I didn't know where to start or what marketing really looked like. Like, so thanks to a lot of help from friends and a lot of trial and error, I have been able to spread the word about this book so that people that I don't know, they're reading it and enjoying it. And that is, that's been super exciting for me. And I hope that this, that, that same thing is, can be possible for you. So this talk is labeled as being for self-published writers, as Don said, because if you're like me, you came into this knowing very little about marketing and not having much guidance. So that's what I'll try to provide in this webinar, a way of getting started. I am not a marketing professional, uh, but I'm happy to share what I've learned from one writer to another. Hopefully this will give you a head start so you can be off and running more quickly. It is possible to get your hand into the books of more readers, and let's talk about how to do that. When I started, I had two main problems, and I'm guessing you might be there too. My first problem is that um, I had what I thought was a great book, and I knew there were readers out there who would enjoy uh, reading my book, but how, how was I um, going to connect my book to the readers who might be interested? So how do you let readers know about your book is the first problem we'll, we'll try to uh, solve today. And then um, once you have ideas of how to connect your book with readers, how do you not get overwhelmed by all the options out there? How There is so much you can do, so how do you focus your time and attention to be most effective and not burn out? To address these two issues, I'll start by helping open up more possibilities for ways you can connect with readers to give you more ideas to try. And then we'll work on how to narrow down your focus into a strategy that will be effective for you and your book. To start laying the groundwork, I do wanna go through a brief thought exercise. If we were in person or if, uh, if this webinar was smaller, I would ask for you to actually answer this question. I would love to hear your answers. But for today, I'd, uh, I'd love you just to think about your answer to this question. How did you find out about the three most recent books you purchased? So think about the three books you most recently purchased. How did you find out about them? I'll be speaking mostly, as I said, from my experience as a writer in the US, but my goal is that you can apply this to your context. I'm help, hoping this question will help. For me, my answer is that uh, one book that I bought recently was by an author who was nominated for the Booker Prize recently, or long listed for the Booker Prize. I also bought a book uh, from a daily deal list that I subscribed to, an email that I got about this book deal. And I bought a book that was recommended to me by a friend. I would say this list might be slightly unusual. I, I think I most often tend to buy a book that has been recommended to me personally by a friend. But in this case, those were the three most recent books that I purchased. Uh, I think this thought experiment is helpful because as we're asking the question, how can I connect my book with readers? We want to be sure to stay grounded in where readers actually find books. So these aren't readers in the abstract. It's where do you as a reader find a book? And more importantly, where do your target readers find books? So it's important to keep in mind that you may not be your target reader. For example, my book is a young, in the young adult category. It's geared toward 13 to 20 year olds and I'm no longer in that category. So for me, it's important to know where my target readers are, who they are and um, talk to them, figure out how they choose books to read. Where are they finding out the books that they are likely to purchase? In this webinar, uh, I have two underlying principles. Uh, um, so the first is put your book where your target readers are already spending time. Find out where your readers are already spending time and get your book there. And then the second uh, principle that I have is that enthusiasm is contagious. You want to help readers get excited about your book. And also, if you're excited, readers will be as well. So excitement is what uh, leads to that, uh, people talking about your book, people spreading the word about your book sort of organically, telling, one per telling their friends, hey, this book was really um, interesting. This book was, I really loved it. You should read it too. That is really powerful. So enthusiasm is contagious. 
how do we harness that for the sake of our book, for helping spread the word about our book? But before we uh, get into ideas, let's take half a step back. Especially with self-published book, your marketing will be much more successful if you make sure that you're set up well. So you want to be sure that your book is something that you're proud to promote, that you have full confidence that this book will be something that's useful or interesting or something that will make readers' lives better in some way. You also want to be sure that it's a high quality book. This is, you don't want to promote your rough draft. You want uh, your self-published book to be edited, proofread, typeset if possible, all these things that will make it a high quality book that readers will respond to. And that when it comes to promoting a book, if it's a high quality book, it will get more traction more quickly. Also, an attractive cover goes a long way. Um, I think my, the cover of my book is, is very gorgeous. The, I've got a friend who's a designer to help me with the cover of my book. And the, uh, there are a lot of people who pick up a book and decide whether to spend more time with it or not based on the cover. People do judge books by their cover. And the gorgeous cover of my book has opened a lot of doors. People have said, uh, bookstore owners have said, yes, we're willing to put your book on our shelves because it's so pretty or people you know, stop to look at it as they're walking by and say, oh, that's a really pretty cover. What is the book about? So an attractive cover is worth investing in. And uh, you, I would also say, this is one is arguable, but uh, you want your book to be available in a variety of formats. And by that, I mean probably paperback, ebook, and audiobook. All of those are options that are open to self-published writers. If you have questions about how to get your book into those formats, um, uh, maybe ask a question in the Q&A time, or I'm happy to talk about that more later. But uh, you can do that low cost or no cost. And it's awesome. Some marketing opportunities are only open to one of those forms. So if you have your book available in a variety of formats, that is helpful for marketing. So um, what are some ideas you can try? And what are some of the benefits and drawbacks of each of these different approaches? My goal here is to give you a lot of ideas to try if you weren't already aware of these ideas. Um, I want to broaden your possibilities. So with the first problem of how do you connect your book with readers, here are lots of different things you can try. I'll briefly talk about each one. I might go pretty quickly through this section. Um, and then we'll get into a little bit more of how to use them in a strategic form. So these options are free, except for a few that I'll explain. And they are all available to self-published authors. Social media is probably the one you're already aware of. Uh, by social media, I mean Facebook, personal page, an author page, Instagram, Twitter, uh, lots of people are talking about TikTok these days. I don't personally know that one, but apparently that's a social media option you can try. These uh, different platforms can be useful for different options. Facebook, I've found tends to be good for connecting with people who already know me personally and helping them get excited about my book. Um, Facebook is also, by and large, roughly, um, people who are older than me, I found that that's who I'm connecting with on Facebook. Uh, Instagram is another social media option. That one I, if I found is really easy to connect with new people. And there's a strong community of readers on Instagram. They tend to be my age or younger, but from what I've found. Again, by and large, huge generalizations. But Twitter is also good for connecting with other writers, agents, or editors. So those are some options you can try on social media. And um, with the with this, uh, I, mindset of trying to put your book where readers already are, I found one statistic yesterday that 16 to 24 year olds, so exactly the readers I'm looking for, they spend three hours a day on social media. I don't know if that was pre-pandemic or during the pandemic, but uh, three hours a day on social media, I definitely want my book to be there. I found social media is great for spreading the word to communities of readers, connecting with those readers, connecting with other authors and publishing professionals. This is a great way to let people know who you are and get them intrigued about your book. Um, social media, you can use it in lots of different ways. There are all sorts of ways you can craft your voice on social media. And um, it, the drawback of social media is that it does take effort and creativity to post regularly and get more, build up more of a following on social media. Another option is a website. So this is good for having a central place to share information about you. A website definitely helps build credibility and it also is a way readers can find you. So discoverability is kind of a buzzword. Um, so when someone is Googling, say a book about 
um, a book set in the 1960s South Carolina that deals with race in some way. Um, I want my, my book happens to fit that description. So I want, so for people who are looking for books like that, I want my book to pop up and I want readers to associate me and my book with that query. So I want to have a website that will appear on Google, things like that. Also professional reviews, as Don mentioned, um, uh, what Don mentioned about Publishers Weekly, that is an example of um, a professional review. So uh, a professional publication reads your book, writes about your book. Um, the places like libraries and bookstores often read pro professional publications to find books to offer to their readers. So if you're hoping for wider exposure, professional reviews are very helpful. Professional reviews also help build credibility. I put uh, a quote from the review that Don mentioned as well as other professional reviews that I've gotten. Those go up on my Amazon page and my website. Um, a, lot of these, a lot of professional publications do accept submissions from self-published authors. It can be harder to get into. There's more competitive, there is, it is competitive to get into or uh, to get a professional review from some places but there are some reviews that are geared specifically towards self-published authors, so that is helpful to find. Other reviews have a special self-publishing section, so, and these are sometimes at cost or often at cost, so you pay a reviewer to look at your book, and, um, and then you are guaranteed a review, but it's, uh, you, you don't know what the reviewer will write, so there is still a bit of risk even if you do pay for a review. And um, in the, actually, in the case that Don mentioned, that review was in the self-published category, about self-published books category of Publishers Weekly. So it was a review that I paid for. I paid for them to get their attention, basically. And then they wrote whatever they wanted to. So the fact that it was such a positive review was, um, I mean, that was entirely up to the reviewer's discretion. And, uh, but for me, it was helpful because I got that professional review and it was in a publication that is widely read. So that was helpful for me. And that is a strategy you can take as well. The, the downside of a professional review is that you do have to donate your book. You have to send out your book and pay for shipping if it's a paperback copy. There's also no guarantee of what review will, will write. Reader reviews are also very powerful. So uh, when I'm choosing a book to buy, I almost always look to see what other readers thought of it. Uh, even did they, did they think it was slow but beautiful? Does that match what I'm looking for in a book right now? Was it a quick but mindless read? What did they like about it? Is that uh, what I'm hoping for in this book? So Amazon and Goodreads, which I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, those are two of the most important places for reviews, at least in my context in the United States. So another idea to try is partnerships with other authors. For me, this is one of the most fun uh, things I've tried. I recently did a series of interviews with other writers who are writing uh, books for the similar age group that my book is. Uh, you I, I did a video interview in that case, so I asked, I contacted a bunch of authors and asked if they would be willing to talk with me about their book, about their writing career, and then I posted those videos on my social media, and um, they, it, that was a way of partnering with those authors so that readers who are interested in those authors will, may also, might also come to discover me. You can also partner with other authors for events or you can do blog visits uh, right on their blog if they have an established blog following, things like that. For me, so the goal is to share readership uh, if you have a similar sort of readership or if you're writing about similar topics, things like that. For me, this one is purely fun because I, I like getting to work with other people, partnering with other people, and I don't see many drawbacks to this. I, I suppose you could uh, think of it in terms of competitiveness, if you might be dividing readers, but I've found that actually, uh, sort of the shared energy, the shared readership is, is helpful for both people. I, I, so I haven't seen many drawbacks personally. Goodreads, as I just mentioned, is, uh, according to their website, they are the world's largest site for readers and book recommendations, and they apparently have about 90 million users. This is big in the United States. It might not be as useful in every country, but uh, this is a large community of active readers. I use this site to keep track of um, what books I want to read, so I have a to-read list on Goodreads. That's how most, a lot of people use it. 
and uh, it's also I find get news from different authors that I follow. I see what my friends are reading. So Goodreads is a community, and based on who you're friends with on the site, you can you can hear about. Um, oh, my friend wrote a review about this book. They really enjoyed it. I might enjoy it too. So uh, you can also, as an author, I can also post notes and highlights on Goodreads through Kindle. And so those will show up. It's a way of uh, having more engagement with readers. Readers can also post questions that I can answer on Goodreads. So on Goodreads, you can create a, your own page for your book and uh, that's free. A lot, of, a lot of people do find out about books here. This is where readers are already engaging and this is where they're looking for books. So you want to put your book there too. And again, reader reviews are a, a very important part of engaging new readers. So Goodreads is a, an important place for that. A blog is another idea to try. And by this, I don't mean just an online journal where you pour out your innermost thoughts, although some people, uh, for some people it might mean that. Uh, what I mean by blog is a site with frequently updated content. So that's a bit of a broader definition. This is a way of, people, of bringing people to your website. If you host your blog on your website, it, it, is a way of multiplying the ways people can discover you as a writer. So it can help establish you as an expert, especially if you're a nonfiction writer and you have a blog about your topic. This is an, another way people can find short articles that can then lead them to your book. I'll confess, I haven't tried uh, this method. This is one that has been recommended to me. This is one that I do have on my list to try. Um, and one reason I want to try it as a fiction writer, uh, so things that I might write as a fiction writer are about, because my book is set in the 1960s, I can write about uh, the 1960s, I can write about historical fiction, I can write about the process of writing, different things like that, short articles that, again, are another way people can discover me as a writer. Uh, it's been recommended to me because it's another way of having my name and website appear in more search results uh, on Google or other search engines. So if someone is looking for who is a young adult writer writing a, in the 1960s, uh, I want my name to be up there in the top search results. So a blog is a way of doing that. It helps with that discoverability piece. Another idea to try is email marketing. I mean, an e email newsletter, marketing through an email newsletter. So if you can have a sign up on your website, my website has, uh, there's a pop-up that appears and says, hey, please sign up for my email newsletter so you can stay in touch with the latest uh, that comes out. I, I then send out about monthly or quarterly updates to give people, um, you know, the latest news. There's, um, if I've written something in another publication or if there's a giveaway coming up, that's a way I can let my readers know. Email newsletter is especially helpful for building reader loyalty to help readers feel connected to me as a writer and uh, then when my next book comes out, I'm hoping that I already have a built-in audience, a built-in sales for the next book because they already know me, they've already been engaging with me. Um, email newsletter is most likely not a first point of contact, but it's a great way of building that excitement in readers, a way of helping them feel engaged in a part of your writing journey. So uh, again, it's like laying the groundwork of sales for when the next book comes out. So long-term view, email newsletter is very helpful. Other publications are another idea. So as I just mentioned, um, and that's a topic you can write about in your email newsletter. So you can publish a, a different piece of, of writing in a literary magazine, uh, maybe, or a magazine about craft or another blog. So for example, I had a piece, um, I wrote, I've written a, a few articles since my book came out. I, I've written a few articles about sort of personal experience, narrative, um, nonfiction and that I have published in a few different magazines. I've also published a short story since then. So each of those publications are more ways people can find out about me as a writer. And in the bio section of that uh, publication, I can say, and I've also written a novel. So if people enjoyed the, what they just read of that short piece, then they can uh, go find my novel. And it's another way I can establish myself as a writer. Uh, the publications, so I, as I was writing shorter pieces, I was sending them out to publications where my target that were already connecting with my target readers. So this was another way of finding where my target readers already were and putting my book there. In-person events is another idea. This is uh, another personal favorite of mine. So when my book came out, I 
I knew that something that would be fun for me, something I would really enjoy was to have a big book release party. So at a, a cafe nearby, I um, rented out a room, got food, got people to come play, friends to come play music. Uh, there were games and there was a photo corner and there were uh, contests. So all sorts of ways to make it fun for the people who came to help me celebrate uh, the, the people who had helped me along the journey, but then also people who were excited to come celebrate with me about my book and it helped them get talking about my book. So if someone asked them, oh, where were you Saturday night? They could say, oh, I was at a book release party for this book. Um, it looks really good. You should, maybe you should read it too. That was what, that was my goal. And um, it was really fun for me too. So I, that is that was one of my personal favorite things that I've done. There's also um, I've also done book signings at bookstores, library events for um, here locally. There are a few different library or the different local libraries host an, a type of event that's like uh, they call it for local author fest. So different local authors are coming together uh, for an in-person event, and then readers come and discover all these authors at once. So that's that's been another favorite of mine. Uh, this is again helpful for getting people excited about your book that in-person energy is uh i enjoyed that way of communicating enthusiasm is in person and uh it can bring in readers especially if you do it in combination with another author or at a venue where people are already spending time bookstore connections are another idea uh as a self-published author you can ask bookstore to put your book on your sh on their shelf Many independent bookstores, at least in the United States, will let independent authors put their books on consignment in their bookstore. So that means that uh, often bookstores will have sort of a form to fill out and you tell them about your book. It can be somewhat competitive. So again, here is where having a quality book, having professional reviews, having a gorgeous cover is really helpful. Um, it'll be more, bookstore owners are more likely to want to partner with you if your book seems really high quality. Um, in this, so if you put your book on consignment, it, there is a cost with that. Usually I found it's about $25 or so to put your book on consignment. So you're sort of renting their shelf space. And then bookstores do get about 40% of sales uh, seems average for what I've seen. But again, bookstores are where readers are often looking for books. And so you want your, to put your book there so they can find it. The, um, yeah, I, one drawback. So if with bookstore connections, one thing that I have learned is that if you self-publish your book through Amazon's platform, some independent bookstores will be more reluctant to carry your book. So that may be a hurdle that you have to face, but um, keep asking, keep broadening your network of bookstores to find places that will carry your book. Contests are another way you can get out the word about your book. So I've submitted, uh, I've submitted my book to several contests that are open to self-published writers. Right now my book is a finalist for, uh, there's an award called the Sela Award. That's a, uh, a Christian writing conference, has an award for different, uh, different types of books that were published. Mine is a finalist in the young adult category. And so this is a way that people who follow this award can find out about new books that have been published. Uh, that was a contest is that's one of the ways that I found out about one of the books that I most recently purchased. So I do think contests can be helpful. Uh, con the drawback of contests is that they can be costly. I've seen entry fees that are anywhere from $30 to over a hundred. I, uh, I would advise maybe staying away from the ones that are more expensive. Uh, but Again, contests can bring attention to your book and help build credibility. It can be great to put that seal on your book cover or on your website to say, my book won this award, you should read it. Um, that can be helpful for drawing in readers who are checking out your book. Press release is another idea you can try. Uh, by this, I mean a newspaper or magazine announcing the publication of your book. So this is probably uh, a short, uh, several hundred word press release, a uh, new, uh, news article that you write and then send out to publications like newspapers or magazines. Uh, this was probably most effective if the publication already reaches your target readers. But uh, one thing that was, uh, I have seen some fun, it is fun when your book appears. So this might not necessarily be where most readers are looking for books, but it can be another way of spreading the word to, to build that feeling of, I've been seeing this book everywhere lately, I should check it out. Um, one fun story that I have with this is that I sent out a press release to different magazines and different newspapers when my book came out. And there was a magazine, uh, a local magazine that's published here in this area where I live, that they decided they wanted to publish a, a short, 
bit about just a paragraph about my book. There's my book cover and a short paragraph about it. And it, uh, my book ended up on a page with, I think three other books on their like sort of book reviews page. And it's right across from a full page picture of the Jonas Brothers. So I suppose that was reaching uh, more, more likely to catch the attention of my target readers. It was not a magazine that I thought would be effective, but I, I thought that that placement was uh, particularly funny. And uh, I, I was happy to see it there. So advertisements are another way you can get out word. These are, this is paying for your book to appear somewhere. Uh, people will be searching on Google, say, or Amazon in, in my context in the US. Uh, or if you want your book to appear on Facebook, Instagram, Goodreads, or another site, you can pay for your book to appear. This, uh, so if you want your book to appear in places where readers are already spending time, often looking for a book to purchase, they're actively looking for what to read next, you can pay for your book to appear as they search. Um, it can be in sort of a paid review or paid uh, result, search result that appears at the top. Especially on Amazon, there's a quick transition from searching to buying. However, an advertisement does come at a cost. Um, so you, I mean, you can get started and get good traction with say 100 to 200 dollars a month, depending on the setting you choose. These advertisements will also learn from you and improve over time so that your results are better. But that does require more money invested over long term. Um, I personally haven't had much success yet with Amazon or Google advertisements. Um, I haven't seen them convert at a rate of sales that I was satisfied with, but I have found ads on, Insta on Facebook and Instagram to lead to much greater exposure and engagement. Uh, again, I'm not sure about how those have converted to sales, but I do have a lot to learn in this area. So um, advertisements are something else you can try and I'll be learning along with you. An Amazon author page is another basic tool. Uh, it's another place where readers can find out more about you. So say your, uh, your book pops up on a search result on Amazon, and then they're looking for more information about who is this author, where, where did this book come from? So uh, having a, an Amazon author page is another way you can put your, your biography, uh, more information about you. You can also put some links to it. So I have some videos up on my page. Um, again, this is helpful for engaging people who have already found your book but it can build that enthusiasm that you're looking for. Um, so if your book is for sale on Amazon, you can have an, off, an author page on Amazon. You just have to put in the information, confirm your identity, and then put in your information to have that author page. Amazon ebook deals are another thing you can try. These are certain promotional options that are available on Amazon if you self-publish through Amazon's platform and choose to make your book exclusively available, your ebook exclusively available on Amazon. So this is how I started off. Uh, I self-published through Amazon and then I uh, made my ebook exclusively available through Amazon. And so I tried out their ebook deal. There are different types of deals you can try. There's a um, sort of a limited time, a countdown deal they call it, so to where your book is at a discount for a certain period of time. And then will, your book will appear on Amazon's list for those deals. So this is another way if people who are looking for deals can discover your book if it's the type of book they're interested in. Um, this and maybe in combination with an advertisement might be more effective for me i didn't particularly find the results i didn't particularly find it worth it so now um i have moved away from this my book my ebook is no longer available just on amazon i preferred having the wider variety of options as opposed to the this ebook option but it is something you can try giveaways or something else you can try by this uh this is an offer to give away your book on a platform like goodreads or social media this, uh, so people enter for a chance to win your book for free in exchange for something. So uh, on Goodreads, for example, people enter to win, enter for a chance to win your book. And uh, then that means that they add your book to their to read list, which is helpful because anything that they add to their to read list shows up on all their friends feeds. Uh, anyone who's connected to them on Goodreads, they find out about your book that can find out about your book that way as well. Or if you're doing it on social media, you can um, ask for people to follow you in exchange for a chance to win your book. Or you can ask uh, for people to repost about your book to help spread the word uh, for, as that, how they can enter for a chance to win your book. So this can be, can be a great way of helping spread the word, um, helping find new readers, helping new readers get excited about your book because who doesn't love a free book? So this can be a way of building excitement as well as finding new readers. Social media giveaways only cost expense of, of the book as well as shipping it. 
And then Goodreads giveaways do cost, uh, it's currently about currently $119 per giveaway. And that's, you can give away as many books as you want. Um, I have found this to be probably the most effective way of spreading the book. Um, for me, this is much more effective than paying for advertising. Readers who enter the contest, as I said, add on, give, on Goodreads, they add my book to their to read list and then it shows up on, on all their friends feeds. And uh, so if 10 people enter the giveaway on Goodreads, then all everyone that they're connected with finds out about my book as well. And then you can see how the reach grows exponentially. Also, those readers will be automatically updated every time I post an update as an author or every time I offer a new giveaway. So it keeps my book in front of them. Presentations on a subject are uh, another option you can try. So as an author, once you have a book that's published, you are an expert on that subject. You can give library lectures, uh, school presentations, webinars on your subject of your, on the subject of your expertise. So especially if you're a nonfiction author, this is probably something you want to try. I, um, I contacted several libraries around me saying, I can talk about historical fiction. Would, your, uh, would you be interested in an event where I as an author come and talk about the process of turning history into historical fiction? And there, uh, my local library here was interested. There's another library that contacted me because they heard that about this presentation that I gave at my local library. So people who are interested in your topic might show up and find out about your book. This can be a way of testing, readers can test out whether to buy a book or not, depending on what they hear in the talk. Um, again, I, this is especially helpful for nonfiction writers. Podcasts are another thing to try. Uh, uh, this is a popular new area of mar marketing. Podcasts are on the rise. So this is, these are audio programs, usually short episodes available online or through apps. I know a lot of people who listen to podcasts. So this is a place where readers are already spending time. And I know a lot of authors who have started their own podcast as a way of engaging those people listening to podcasts. Uh, this can be a way of engaging readers in your topic of expertise, especially if you have a lot to say that um, you can broaden it beyond the scope of your book. So say if you want to interview people about different angles uh, of your book or interview more people, tell more stories, this can be a great way of engaging more readers. Uh, the downside is if you do your own podcast, it will take a lot of time and creativity and effort. Uh, but it does help establish credibility. You can also go as a guest on someone else's podcast, uh, especially if someone has your target readership as part of who is already listening to their podcast. Finally, final idea, discount ebook sites are another way of finding out about books. This is another way I found out about one of the books I most recently purchased. So these are websites, uh, usually with email lists, that notify subscribers when there are ebook deals on the type of books those readers want to read. So BookBub is the main one. It has over 10 million members, um, according to the website, but there are also lots of other sites like this. So these are um, uh, effective. Some of them are more effective than others. Uh, the, I've found that the more effective ones require payment and are competitive. Uh, to get into. So for example, BookBub, I've submitted my book to them, I think three different times and they haven't been interested in it so far, but I'm gonna keep trying. Uh, there are also, also lots of other free ones that uh, my book, I tried my book on a few free ones, but I don't think my book was, the people who had subscribed to those lists weren't as interested in my book. Uh, so it's helpful to pay attention to what types of books are already on those discount ebook sites. So you're, you will be offering your book for a discount, say 99 cents, um, as a dollar 99, $2.99, that those are typical discounts, in, at least in the US in my context. But uh, this is where readers are already looking for books. They're already in the purchasing mindset. So it can be helpful to get your book there in those places where they're already spending time. So if you were feeling stuck before, hopefully that gave you some ideas to try, some ideas that you hadn't thought of. But that can be an overwhelming list. Um, so my goal is to quickly, I'm, I'm uh, running out of time, sorry, Don. But I uh, hope, I wanna also talk through, where do you get started? So how do you focus, how do you figure out what will be most helpful and what's a waste of time? How do you not burn out by just trying lots of different things all the time? For this, uh, I suggest developing a personalized strategy. So as you do this, keep in mind what's most important for your readers. You want to find the intersection between uh, what your readers want to see and what you want to do. So I suggest 
starting small, focus on five strategies and then focus on the strategies that give you energy. As, you, as I went through that list of ideas and maybe you have other, lists, other ideas as well, um, what are the energies that sparked, uh, sparked energy or sparked creativity for you that you could see yourself doing? Pay attention to those and try those. Uh, focus on those first. Don't, uh, you don't wanna just forget about what readers want though. So maybe start with the three, most stra three strategies that are most important for your readers. So focus, start small, focus on some. And again, the ideas that I listed, I went through a very brief overview. So it will, um, put on the strategies that you want to focus on, find out more, ask uh, how to do those strategies effectively. But start small and focus on strategies that give you energy so that will be more, uh, not the ones that will be much more difficult for you, but ones that, that you feel naturally drawn to, start there. And also set clear goals so you know when you've done enough. So set goals in terms of how much revenue you want to reach through sales or exposure. How many new readers do you want to connect with? And then define your limits for time and energy. So how much time do you want to spend on marketing each day? How much, how much time do you want to spend on marketing on this particular project? How much time do you want to spend long term? Um, or how much money do you want to spend? Those are important limits to keep in mind to, uh, as part of your strategy as you're trying to focus your energy. Also find another tip that I would say is to find writers who are doing a good job and uh, copy what they're doing. Get ideas from other writers that you, uh, you admire what they're doing in terms of marketing. So what might this look like? If you're an outgoing fiction writer, maybe this means, uh, maybe you can do something on social media. Uh, so number one here, I'm actually combining social media with what I labeled as uh, uh, partnering with other authors. So maybe challenge other authors to social media dance or singing contest. Uh, host, maybe host a large book release party, ask for reader reviews from 200 people you know personally, ask to do a book signing, bookstores in six different cities, volunteer to give presentations on writing at five schools. So these are all things that as a fiction writer you can probably do. Um, as do what will sound, what sounds fun to you, what will help build your enthusiasm as well as enthusiasm of readers. Again, enthusiasm is contagious. So uh, notice that these goals are specific. There are specific numbers there, 200 people, six different cities, five schools. Um, and it, the more specific your goals can be, the more likely you'll be to reach them. And also, um, again, pursue ideas that sound fun to you. Uh, look for where, what will engage the types of readers you're looking for, what will probably be fun for them, and what sounds fun to you. On the other hand, if you're a nonfiction writer and maybe you're, or maybe you're shyer, something you can do with social media is to post favorite quotes that uh, is, feels a little less invasive maybe uh, for a lot of people. Um, it, if you if you're, don't enjoy putting your life out on social media, this is something you can do to put something on social media. Maybe you can enter six contests and your book to six contests. Interact with 10 reader groups on Goodreads. Um, this is a place where you can interact, not in person, but uh, through online, through, through where readers are already spending time, you can start building those connections with them. You can, maybe you can interview through email uh, similar authors for a blog series or publish three essays on a subject related to your book. These are, um, again, ones that aren't necessarily, uh, don't require a lot of in-person energy, but are things you can try online. As you develop your strategy, I would suggest don't forget the essentials. So there are some things you probably want to do whether they sound fun to you or not. For this, I would suggest having a website. Um, again, a website is a great way of building credibility. This is where um, you can let people know that you exist as a writer. This is where you can control, uh, have a central place of information about you as a writer. So a website is probably uh, a, an important tool that you probably want to spend time developing. Again, social media presence. Uh, the type of platform you choose can depend. You, maybe you don't need to be on all platforms, but maybe you want to focus your energy on one specific one. But I do think you probably need to be on at least one social media pl platform. And then reader reviews are the other thing that I would say you probably need to put an effort to get, regardless of whether it sounds fun or not. These are very helpful uh, in terms of, as readers are judging whether your book is worth spending time on and energy on or not, they will read other reader reviews. And this is a great way of, um, getting people excited about your book. Okay, very briefly, here are a few things that uh, I found out about in my process of working on things, tools that ended up being very helpful for me. 
marketing is best works best when it looks good. So Canva is a free tool that's available online and as an app. It helps with all those design aspects of social media posts or actually this um, the the presentation that I put together, this, these slides I put together on Canva. So in terms of the font and the colors and all that, there are all sorts of templates on Canva. It makes your design work much simpler. Squarespace is what I used to develop my website. Uh, Canva is a free tool. Squarespace uh, can be free or you can pay, um, pay depending on what you're looking for. So, but it is fairly cost effective. MailChimp is a free option for an email newsletter and uh, later is an option for social media cross posting. So if you want to publish across all social media at once, uh, later is a good tool for that. You can schedule posts and they can, they, it will automatically post on all your social media platforms that are connected. So uh, to sum things up, I, so I encourage you to take a first step. So anything that you do in terms of marketing is better than not doing anything at all. So take a first step, regardless of what that is, um, doing something is worthwhile. Back to the basic principles I mentioned at the beginning, focus on where your readers are already spending time and on what will spread enthusiasm. So start wherever you can on what sounds like it will give you energy. And it is possible, remember, it is possible to find new readers, help new readers find your book. Um, it will take effort and creativity and it will take patience, but it is possible. So thank you for participating. Um, let me know if you have other questions or uh, if you have other methods that you want to try. Here are some ways you can connect with me and there's my website on there too. So Dawn, I know I went over time. I'm sorry, I hope that didn't cut it into uh, your questions. I'd still love to hear, um, yeah, what you, uh, yeah, what questions was, you had. That was a lot of great ideas, Christine. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, I think we're curious, I know one of the participants was curious on what your personal strategy was because there are so many ways that you presented here. How could you have, I know you have a full-time job as well. So yeah. how did you manage to do this on the side? Could you give us an illustration of what your own strategy was or what you think it should have been in retrospect if you didn't have one at the beginning? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Um, let's see if I can remember what I had. So I had five things that I was focusing on. Uh, let's see if I can remember what they were. Uh, one was to appear on three different podcasts. Uh, one was so different, uh, different podcasts invited me on as a guest. I contacted some podcasts. Uh, one was to publish uh, I forget what number I chose, three, five, uh, different pieces of, uh, of my writing. So short pieces of my writing in different publications. So I tried podcasts. I tried other publications. I tried press release. Um, I'm trying to remember now what else I started off with. Uh, I did, oh, book release party was another in-person event that I used. And uh, there was, oh, now I can't remember what my other one was, but it, so starting off, I did have five tactics that I, uh, I was focusing my energy on those five approaches as I was getting started. Oh, professional reviews. That was the other one that I started with. And then as in the past year, my book came out July of last year. So in the past year that once I felt comfortable with, okay, I think I've reached these five, then I expanded it of, okay, now I wanna try more, let's try more giveaways on Goodreads, let's try giveaways on social media. Um, uh, so that's, I started off with five ideas and then expanded them as I've gone, uh, gone along. So I have tried, um, I think 18 out of those 20, I think that's right, if not 19 out of those 20. So uh, yes, it's mostly evenings and weekends as this has been, Writing is my passion, um, and I knew that I wanted to put in a good effort during, during the first year of my books, um, after my book was published. I knew I wanted to put in a good effort during that year, so it's sort of all in, this is, uh, this is what I've been doing at, uh, yeah, uh, a lot of energy has gone toward this. So uh, yeah, that, that's been my personal strategy. In terms of setting limits, that's something that I'm, I'm working on that uh, as I move forward. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, have you, I think, have you seen results in terms of sales from all that energy you've put into mm -hmm. marketing? I have. Yeah. It's um, so 
uh, I mentioned at the beginning, I'm not a, I'm not a marketing professional. I'm even less of an accounting professional. <laughs> so in terms of, uh, and also this is the part of marketing that I, that is a growth area for me, keeping track of, uh, tracking exactly which efforts lead to which sales that, uh, I have sort of a vague idea of which ones are most helpful. So I do know, for example, Goodreads has been the most helpful in terms of, uh, why increasing the exposure of my book, helping more people find out about my book. But in terms of tracking directly uh, how many of those then purchased my book, I can see generally the efforts that I did in this month led to greater sales. Um, okay. But yes, it, my book is definitely, uh, I mean, I after the first two weeks or so, everyone I knew had who was purchasing the book to support me personally, they'd already bought the book. So every, basically all the sales after that have been um, through marketing efforts, through uh, the promotional push, push that I've done. So I, I hope that answers the question. Right. Yes. All right. We have a lot of questions from participants already. So I just want to start. I don't think we have time for all of them, but um, let's take a stab here. Um, somebody asked, did you try to go to the traditional route of publishing since you work with that traditional Christian publishing house? Did you try that route before entering into self-publishing? And then yes. if, when uh, you went with self-publishing, who did you self-publish with? Mm -hmm. So uh, I did try the traditional route for publishing. I, um, because I work at a publisher, I see all the work that a publisher does. I think traditional publishers can be great partners uh, with a book. But uh, in my particular case, I sent out my book to a number of agents and I got a lot of feedback of my book was, my book was good. My, they enjoyed reading my book, but they didn't know. Um, so I was trying the traditional route of agents who then send it to an editor at a publishing house. And uh, a lot of agents were telling me that they, di they didn't know of an editor who would be interested or because of the topic of my book, they were afraid to take a risk on it. So my book um, in the US race is, it's a very uh, hot topic right now, but especially a few years ago, as a white writer writing about race, it is, um, a, a lot of people were nervous about that with my book. So I, I got enough feedback from uh, in particular uh, professors at, uh, in my master's program in my grad school, uh, as well as other writing mentors, people who told me this, this is a good book. It, we don't understand why it's not being picked up. And mm -hmm. so people who encouraged me to take the risk and self-publish it myself. So I, because I believe in the book, I was willing to do that. And I knew it would take a lot of effort in marketing. I knew that that would be a big, I would have to put in a lot of energy. So I knew going in that marketing was going to be something I would spend a lot of time on if I wanted to self-publish my book. Um, mm -hmm but I was willing to. So I, I did self-publish through Amazon. Uh, I built, uh, I built my own imprint. Uh, so my book does have a logo on the side, which is, um, it, it helps lend the book credibility. So someone picking up my book, um, I also got professional help in terms of the cover design, in terms of typesetting, because I work in publishing. I do have lots of friends who were willing to help me, thankfully. So I, I was confident I could put out a high quality book and then the uh, Amazon self-publishing platform, Kindle Direct Publishing, was fairly easy to use. It's also pretty easy to um, mess up. Uh, so I started off doing some things on my own and quickly realized I needed help. Uh, and so I, yeah, but it, it did end up being a, a useful platform for me. Okay, great. That's really helpful. Um, so uh, we have a question here from Artie Roberto in the Philippines. Um, uh, which I know is a big question for many self-published authors. So when, when you are a self-published author, it's really diff one of the most difficult things is to determine objectivity on how, how you know that your product, your book is quality. How can you set yourself up for success that way? Are there any specific steps to take to ensure that your book is high quality before you publish it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so one of the pieces of advice that I most frequently give is uh, both for traditionally published authors as well as for self-published authors, have a re writer community. So people who are reading your book as you're developing it and people who read your finished draft and give you feedback on it. So be sure that you're connected with other writers who will be reading your book and helping you, helping point out some of your blind spots, helping you develop your writing and produce something that's high quality. So that's the first piece of advice I would say is make sure that you have other writers reading your book, giving you feedback and, uh, or other readers giving you feedback on your, what the experience is like with your book. And then I would say um, it's worth finding an editor. And um, 
asking, um, investing an amount of money and paying a professional editor if you can afford it, uh, or if not finding a, I, I really would advise finding a professional editor because that help, that sort of help is, I think, invaluable. I mean, I work as an editor, I suppose I am biased, but uh, <laughs> I mean, editor, I needed an editor. I am an editor, but I needed an editor for my book. Mm -hmm. I think everyone benefits from having an editor who will be engaging with the content and saying, um, yeah, this needs more development or this idea didn't make sense. Uh, if, if you really can't afford it, at least have a friend who's gifted in those areas look at your book as a favor. But I would suggest investing money in that. And then mm -hmm. also, um, I, I invested in uh having a, getting a professional designer to work on my book cover and that has definitely paid off that was a worthwhile investment i found and then the other thing is that i did find well i asked a friend who was a professional typesetter and i did um mm. i was very grateful to and did give a small gift of appreciation to um but did the typesetting for my book so that is it's a professional experience um pick, when people pick up my book it looks like a professionally done book because it was professionally done it just happens to be self-published mm. Okay, so it sounds like your investment paid off and there definitely is an upfront investment in making yes. sure it is quality by working with and hiring professionals to oversee those parts of the book that need overseeing. Yeah, um, I, do, I do recommend that, yeah. Okay, that's helpful. Um, about getting a, an attractive cover, we have a question from Sandra Chambers on if you have any recommendations for how or who to uh, hire to get an attractive book cover for a reasonable cost? Oh, that is a great question. Um, I know there are sites out there that can connect designers to authors. Um, I think one of them might be Fiverr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm thinking there are other places. So like uh, writer associations or writer magazines, like um, mm -hmm. the writer magazine or other places like that are places where designers can post um, sort of the profile or um, Publishers Weekly actually book list mm -hmm. is the self publishing part of uh, Publishers Weekly. And there are designers who I think can advertise on there or can post their information on there. Um, in my case, I I was fortunate that I have a friend who, a good friend who had read my book. He was part of my writer's group and he uh, is a professional designer. So he's the one who did my cover. So I, I didn't have to go out there searching for it. Um, but uh, if you, uh, another way, another strategy you can try to find a designer is to join maybe writer's groups on Facebook or, and ask people who their designer was or find a book cover that you like and see who designed that and see if that person does any freelance work. Okay, thank you. That's helpful. Um, let's see. One, uh, we have one participant who asked here in your book release parties, this was a question from Lynn Monsanto. Is that the same as a book launch? Um, mm. And if so, how did you do it? Who did you have attending? And was it exclusively for your book or was it together with books of other authors? Would that work? Yeah, good question. Um, I, I guess the, the term book launch and book release party could be synonymous. I, I was thinking of book launch as sort of the wider umbrella of sort of everything I was trying, all the energy I was trying to build around when my book came out and the book release party was part of that. I, um, I, did, do, I did do my event on my own. I figured I uh, sort of already had enough, I had enough friends or enough acquaintances who would probably be willing to come that I thought I could pull it off um, as a solo party, but um, but it, I could see it working really well partnering with another writer. Um, the, uh, for me, it was particularly fun because I, I knew that there were people who were excited, who people who had been asking me about my book, people who had been part of my writing journey with me and I knew would be wanting to celebrate. Um, I feel, did I miss another part of that question? Uh, I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, Let's see here, so many good questions. Um, Nelson Dye in the Philippines at, is a multi-published author. He is asking, how do I balance marketing the 10 books that I've published over the last 14 years? Most of us don't have this problem, but a few of us might. Um, 
Oof, that is, uh, that is a challenging question and I'm uh, not sure how to answer it. Um, I guess I would say figure out, I, uh, set limits so, or set goals that will work for you, that feel right for you personally in terms of uh, in terms of what books do you still feel energy around or what books do you feel like they still haven't yet reached their full potential and then maybe spend more energy with that. Um, I would say that one of the hardest parts about marketing is that it it is such an essential part of a writing career. Um, I mean, it's our, we want to write our books. We want to spend time writing our books, but our books uh, really um, take, I'm, uh, our books gain life or um, become alive when readers are actually reading them. So to connect our books with readers through marketing, we, we do need to put an effort there. But then how do you balance time developing new books and time spreading the word about the books that already exist? And I think, I, I mean, the only answer that I've seen and that I've come up with is that it's a continual, a process of continually navigating uh, where to where to spend time on each of those and it is it's an ongoing process and um yeah i don't think there's i don't think there's an easy answer an answer that works for everyone i think it just has to depend on what um what are you still feeling energy for what are you still feeling um like you can you can put more energy into mm -hmm. i hope that helps yeah that's helpful that's good um let's see um this is a big question but maybe just in a nutshell um Eric Kinberg is wondering how your audio book, <laughs> but this is relevant to most self-published authors. How has your audio book widened your exposure and is it worth the effort? Yes, um, I would say it is worth the effort. Uh, so my audio book, uh, I did in my audio book through the self uh, audiobook self-publishing platform on Amazon, which is connected to Audible. So my book is available on, on Audible and on iTunes. Um, and I did mine, I, there was no upfront cost of investment because it's the self-publishing uh, part of Audible through audiobook. And I, I posted my book online, different narrators who are also looking to build their portfolio. They auditioned and I picked one that I liked. Uh, she did a fantastic job. We worked back and forth on it. So it was time investment, but then um, now there's an audiobook that exists. It was, um, I didn't have to pay a, any costs up front other than I did pay the designer to work on a specific audiobook um, cover. But other than that, it's uh, it basically all sales that have resulted from the audiobook have been, um, I, I see it as net gain. And uh, I, I find audiobooks helpful because there are some readers who, uh, myself included, I tend to um, list either look for a um, books specifically on audiobook, or I look for books that are available on audiobook as well as ebook. And sometimes I purchase um, a, purchase a book in multiple formats. So he, uh, having an audiobook, I think, opens up your book to more readers. And there are also, I guess I didn't talk about them, but there are also um, discount email lists specifically for audiobooks or Facebook groups specifically for people looking for audiobooks to listen to. Mm -hmm. So uh, having an audiobook has been, I've find it helpful. It, um, I thought the, the drawbacks were very minimal and I've found it um, very useful. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So broadening your reach then to more mm -hmm. readers. Um, let's see, I know some of you are on limited time, but if you can stay with us, we do have a few more questions. Um, what about um, updating an old ebook and relaunching it? What do you think about that? And what would it look like in a nutshell? Hmm. Um, in terms of, uh, I think it might be useful, um, I guess, uh, not knowing the context, I'd be curious to hear more about that in terms of, uh, I mean, it sounds like um, if updating an old ebook would be, it must be a project that you still have the energy for. So I'd say do it. I mean, I don't, I don't see what the drawback would be necessarily. And I think relaunching can be a way of building more energy. It can be a way of having sort of a fresh start and, uh, having sort of starting over with marketing and saying, uh, especially if you have a new cover or something like that, that can um, help build, uh, build energy, make it actually look new, make it feel seem like you have something new to offer. And I think, uh, yeah, I think it would be worthwhile. I hope, I hope that helps. Okay, great. A lot of, uh, Artie has another question. Many authors uh, who are shy and averse to self-promotion, especially on social media, 
might wonder, is it better to hire someone else to promote your book or outsource the promotion part and just focus on writing? Hmm. Hmm. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I, I find that an interesting question because I do find it a tempting option. <laughs> um, there are a lot of days where I feel like this would be so much easier if I could just outsource this, someone pays someone else to do this. And um, I focus on the writing part because the writing part, honestly, the writing part does give me more energy than the, than the marketing does. So in terms of my career as a writer and my limited time uh, on evenings and weekends, I would, I would rather spend that writing than marketing. But um, I, I would say maybe if you, if you have the money and you're willing to invest the money in that area, it, it might be worthwhile to try. For me personally, I felt like I, um, I haven't, been willing to invest the amount of money that I think it would cost to pay someone else to do the promotion. So I've been feeling like, well, I, I don't have a lot of extra money, but I, I do have energy and I can, I can put my time toward this. At least I told myself the first year I would put a big push in toward marketing this book. And so that's, that's what I've done. Um, so for me, it, it was mostly a money issue that I chose not to spend my money that way. But if you can, if it's an option that's open to you, um, it can't mm -hmm. hurt trying, I suppose. And, and I would say then just choose a, um, a marketing professional or uh, someone who will do the promotion, someone whose work, uh, like look for examples of the work that they've type of, that they've done before to make sure that you're, you're paying someone who will actually be worth paying. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I would say. Okay. Um, Daphros and Pastor Jean Pasteur in the Democratic Republic of Congo, um, I think might be feeling like some of our participants a little overwhelmed with the wealth <laughs> and various options of resources and ideas that you've shared. They are wondering if you could just start with the what you thought was the most effective methods. And I know that also depends on where your audience, your readership is, and what your book is about. But could you just touch on that? Yeah, um, I would say, so for me personally, what I feel like is um, one of the most important places I can spend time is on social media, uh, Instagram specifically is where I spend a lot of time. For me, that's because um, that my, my readership, uh, largely US-based, um, uh, sort of 13 to 20 year olds, this is where they're spending a lot of time. This is where they uh, are, are finding out about books to read. So, um, for me, that's where I've chosen to invest a lot of time. I, I would say this depends a lot on context. So again, because my book is a novel, this is where Instagram is a place where readers often find out about novels. Fiction specifically seems to work well on that medium, but it, it does depend a lot on context, on who your target readers are and on, um, yeah, wh who you're trying to reach. So Instagram has worked, it has been a lot of my focus, but I don't think that's the case for everyone. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. So we have a we have a question from um, um, Alemayu Mamo. Um, I'm not sure what country, um, but the question is: is There any hope for self-publishing non-English books? And since you are a Spanish language editor, perhaps you can help address that for a discouraged self-published author. Yes, I, um, I, I do. So I, a lot of what I've talked about is specifically for an English speaking um, uh, market, because that is, that's who I do write in English. I edit in Spanish, but write in English. And so a lot of the research I've done has been for the English language market. But um, I do, I do see a lot of the tools I talked about too, I guess are specific to, so um, things like the, the discount ebook sites are specifically English related, but I have seen other, the, some of those tools are in development for other languages. So for Spanish, I'm starting to see ebook e lists or uh, for example, as an audiobook, I'm, I get emails about audiobooks in Spanish. I'm starting to get, um, I'm starting to see more of those. So, or things like, um, I mean, Amazon is a, a, a probably US based, site, well, international, but maybe larger in the US than it is in other countries, and that um, does have lots of lang different languages. So I would say, um, again, I think this is where the question of where are you finding out about books, and where are your target readers spending time, and how do you put your book there? I do think there's hope. Um, I think 
if there's, uh, I mean, book, book sales and book marketing, it is a tough, it is a tough business. Uh, I mean, I work at a publisher. I, I hear for traditional publishers, it's, it's a puzzle that people are continually trying to figure out. Um, so it is, it can be discouraging. It can be hard, but I do think, I do think the effort is worthwhile. I think the effort is, um, I think however much time and energy and creativity you put into marketing your book to figuring out where your readers spending time and how do you get them excited about what you have to offer. Um, I do think that will pay off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think also you'd be doing a service to your, your, um, your country, wherever you are or your region, whatever language you're writing in too, um, just to raise awareness of, what's available to read and just by doing so you would be encouraging more reading where in your language um one last question here um one author an anonymous author is uh, asking in a time when everyone is looking for free books or hugely discounted books how can you price your book right so that you can adequately compensate your hard work from a writer Yes, um, that is, that's a great question. So I found, um, so offering your book for free or for discounted for a limited amount of time, it can be a helpful tool to help spread the word about your book. So I would say don't, don't write them off completely in that, uh, so for example, offering your book for free for one day, that's a way I've gotten my book to a lot of new writers, I mean, not a lot of new readers who might not have heard about my book otherwise. And then if I can get them excited about my book, then they can help spread the word. Um, so they, it can be useful tools. So don't discount them completely. I mean, don't uh, write them off completely, but it, I mean, it, we do, we are looking for a way of making this sustainable financially as well as, um, uh, you know, emotionally. And I think the, uh, figuring out the pricing, that is another thing that really does depend on, uh, the type of book that you have. So for example, a novel will probably be priced differently than a nonfiction book. If it's for young adults, it might be priced differently than it's, if it's for adults. If it's a thriller, it might be public, it might be priced differently than if it's literary fiction, people will expect to pay more or, uh, or less for different types of books. So I think this is, uh, this is another one that's, it's hard to give a general answer. And, uh, and I'm still playing with this as well. Currently my, my ebook is priced, I think it's $5.99 on Amazon. And I'm playing with that. It's, um, I might get more sales if it was, if my price was lower, but, uh, that's, that's a price that I'm comfortable with at the moment. I did start off with it being at a higher price and then I have lowered it, uh, in the hope of attracting more readers. And again, with price and sales, it is helpful to keep a long-term view in mind. So, um, at, at, with setting the, the cost, setting the price for, for my first book, I have been thinking too about if I can increase the readership, I'm, I'm more willing to discount my book or offer it for free as a way of increasing my readership so that then when my second book comes out, I'll have more of a built-on audience and sales mm -hmm. will improve for that second book. So it can be helpful to keep a long-term view in mind as well. I hope, yeah. that's, I hope that's helpful. Yeah, that's a really good reminder. It's not just about the current sales, mm -hmm. <laughs> long-term readership. Mm -hmm. um, so um, do you have any, you've shared so many great ideas with us. I just wondered if you have any last parting words of encouragement to self-published writers out there around the world. Um, I think what I most want to encourage you is to try something with self-publishing. I, I, I do apologize that this was probably overwhelming in terms of the amount of ideas, but um, find something that is um, something to try, any, whatever it is, and to, to start with that, to take a first step and start with that. Because any, any effort you do put in toward marketing um, is better than doing nothing at all. So I think whatever you do in terms of this area will be helpful. And I do encourage you to try it. So um, yeah, I think it's what, if we believe in our books, if we believe that our books have the chance to make, make readers' lives better in some way, then I think, um, connecting our book with more readers is, is worthwhile and is, um, is worth doing. Great. Yeah. Thank you. And would you mind holding up your book one last time? Oh, sure. Yeah, um, here it is. Yes. It's a beautiful cover. The means that make us strangers and, um, yeah, available on Amazon or we can go to your website, christinekinberg.com. So, 
Uh, thank you so much. We also want to invite you all um, to register for our next webinars. Christine is actually going to be presenting this content again, but in Spanish. So um, if you speak Spanish and would like to review, or if you have Spanish speaking friends who might be interested, please help spread the words. Um, that will be on September 15, and you can go to our website to register. Uh, it's actually not up yet, but it will be soon. Litworld, L-I-T-T, world.org. And then on September 9th, we have another very relevant webinar for self-publishing, self-published authors, or even going with a traditional uh, publisher, um, how to edit your own manuscript with Po Feng Chia uh, of our Daily Bread Ministries in Singapore. So uh, we hope that you'll join us for more. Um, uh, MAI is a Christian nonprofit supported by people like you. So if you enjoyed today's webinar, we invite you to consider praying for our ministry and even donating five or $10 to support our training. And actually right now your gift might be doubled by a generous foundation. So thank you so much today, Christine, for your patience and uh, just for sharing your heart and your passion with us. And um, we look, I know I look forward to reading more of your work as it comes out. So thanks again, everyone. And uh, we look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget to check out all of our other resources available to writers and publishing staff on our website and follow us on social media. Thanks so much.